What is going on, folks? I am Goat. Welcome back to Warframe. Here we are, back in a more casual Steel Path gameplay build. Not anything crazy OP, not anything that's underwhelming and hopefully doesn't let you the fuck down. So, our first frame in this list is going to be Mirage. Now, Mirage just recently got a, a lighting rework, okay? And it's funny that basically the way they described it is that the lighting rework, I mean, she got in a a rework of Eclipse, which is good for Mirage and it's bad for the Helm and Subsuma of Eclipse. But in the grand scheme of things, if you have enough ability strength, it's not as bad as it seems. But Mirage got a tap hold applied to Eclipse because Eclipse was always hokey as shit. Because Eclipse has two functions. It either gives you a weapon, out, a weapon damage output or it gives you, you know, um, damage and vulnerability. So basically, you know, damage reduction. There's two kind of fun ways to build Mirage. So what we're looking at here is we are looking at health, casting speed, casting speed, energy max, and energy max. Um, her abilities is kind of weird to show this because her abilities are a little bit quirky depending on what build you go with. Uh, but we'll go with this for now. So sliding lasts 85% longer and acrobatic maneuvers are 50% faster. Hull of Mirrors, you basically create a bunch of mirrored versions of yourself that gives you uh, a damage increase of 44.6% and gives you four doppelgangers. Cool. It also makes enemies want to shoot at the doppelgangers rather than you. Slide of Hand is basically turn drops into little tiny bombs. If you run Explosive Ledger Domain, it actually spreads like fucking cooties and does a whole lot of bullshit, plus applies a pure 100% status chance to proc enemies. Going to explain why that's on why that's showing here. Eclipse, like I said, damage reduction or damage increase, depending on what functional use you want to use it for. Nourish is on here because this is a Sanctuary Onslaught slash ESO build because you don't get this bullshit shut down near as fucking much when you're in there, when you're doing like ESO especially. So you can just nuke the shit out of the map constantly because everything's like level 60 to 80 range unless you're running long term, like long runs in, in ESO. But this is a pretty goddamn quick way to go, you know, three or four rounds and just absolutely rank up an entire squad. So that being said, this is the ESO and Sanctuary's Onslaught build. So Arcane Steadfast to save a little bit of energy just by, you know, getting a percentage chance of having three abilities not cost jack shit. Arcane Grace for a little bit of survivability. And then this build is pretty freaking obvious as to what the hell it does. It makes bombs out of all drops. Um, and if you're not close enough to energy orbs, that's a bit of a problem because you'll turn energy orbs into bomb too and then lose those. But if you want to rank up all your buddies, just put this build on, okay? It's it's three fucking forma. It's not a big deal. Preparation makes it to where every time you go into the next zone, you constantly have full energy from the start and you just start nuking the shit out of the map. Trust me. First ability, second ability, kill. Kill with weapons, doesn't matter. And then, as enemies die, hit the second ability again. When the first ability runs out, turn it fuck back on. Your buddies will thank you, okay? This is because of the lighting. And this is far more funny. So, instead of using the, you know, the sleight of hand mod, we're not going to put Terrify on here. Because we're going to armor strip enemies, and no matter how far they think they can fucking run away from your ass, uh, they're not going to get away. Pure and simple, they are not going to get the fuck away. But what this does is this basically allows you to armor strip enemies and then throw the giant floating disco ball of prism around, which, you know, it's a drain per second. It has 20 fucking lasers. It has an insane radius on this build. It has a pretty damn decent duration. It blinds enemies. It does radiation damage and has a general second secondary range of good fucking God. If you get a straight enough run, it will go 53.5 meters and it will bounce its way along the way, throwing beams of death at everybody. But like I said, that's this build. Okay, so we're doing gross projection coupled with terrify and we're getting a pure armor strip right off the get. And then multi augmented just to make the, the disco ball more powerful. And then Eclipse, 90% damage reduction, way less damage increase, but believe me, you're just running damage reduction with this. Trust me. So, 
And then the weapons are whatever the hell you feel like sticking on her because there's absolutely no need for doing anything nuts. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go armor strip and then we're going to go disco ball. See, it's kind of shining around and doing whatever the hell it wants to. When it's within the range of the enemies, see, like, I can prime them a little bit. And all of a sudden, the disco ball just starts melting the shit out of them. Here, bitch, take some of that. See, look, she dies. This particular bit is not so he helpful because it's such a broad ceiling area that the thing kind of gets blocked up by shit. But as you can see, the armor strip coupled with the lasers really just destroys the fuck out of every goddamn thing that's around. It's a good time. It's our next frame. Necros. Necros is primarily good at farming. That's not to say that's all he does, but Necros is, is primarily good at being a farming frame. Now, you can run his augment mod uh, to spoil, and that's fine if you want to use health for that. It's totally fine. Personally, I, I don't like to spoil, although you get a lot of a lot of health orbs that pop out and drop so you can very easily replenish your fucking health. But I just never have been a fan of here. I'm going to sacrifice my health to farm shit. And especially since Archon shards have hit, you know, you've got ways to go. Oh, look, I can just apply an Archon shard rather than taking up a mod slot if I feel like it or I can do both. I can do what I need to do. So we've got energy max. Energy max helps out with just using energy instead and not using a mod slot for an augment mod. And then we have the equilibrium mod. And then we have casting speed and casting speed because good God, his casting speed is fucking horrible. Uh, his general function, and you'll see I've taken soul punch off and I put condemn on. The reason being is because, yes, soul punch is functional to shadows of the dead. But honestly, condemn for survivability makes Necros insanely hard to fucking kill. It says passive, restore 5 health with every enemy within 10 meters. Also, the benefit to using the, the spoil augment is that every time you get, you know, basically every time you get a bunch of enemies around you, you're just restoring health. Condemn, pure survivability. Chain enemies, get shields, have a nice day. Terrify is Necros's subsume, and it's a pure armor strip with this build. Desecrate is his farming function, 54% uh, loot off of Gord bodies now that being said you can run the ripkas with this motherfucker and chop enemies the fuck up and really really start to desecrate a whole bunch of shit and then shadows of the dead is an interesting function that does piss a lot of people a lot of uh, players off because no matter what the hell color functions you put on this motherfucker you could put hot pink and then you're just blinding people you could put white and somehow they'll end up blending in with the group the, the Shadows of the Dead are an annoying function, but they are a survivability function, okay? And a damage output function. So you basically, once you, once you have people dead, you can resurrect their bodies, get seven of these motherfuckers, they give you a damage multiplier, a health multiplier, a shield multiplier, and they only decay in their health by 3% per second. So they are a, a big time buff for Necros in general, albeit they may annoy the shit out of some players, people can get the fuck over themselves because if they want a looting guy to help them loot, they will shut the hell up. That is just the truth of it. But, I mean, Necros basically armor strip, kill people, cast four for, for more survivability and damage function, and just turn on his third ability for everything that fucking dies. And like I said, if you really, really, really want to do some, do some funny shit, use something like the Ripka's when enemies are getting low on health and just rip them to fucking shreds and like cut off arms and legs and heads and all that bullshit, all that stuff gets desecrated as well. So it's definitely a functional thing to do. Even on the steel path, you will literally gore the shit out of them. As long as you have this mod on 100% gore chance, as long as you do that, the Ripkas are an insanely good option for Necros, especially from a farming perspective. Aside from that, that's just kind of what Necros does. Okay. Our next frame, Neja. Neja is one of the best survivability weapons platform frames in the game, and he does so much more than that. 
Now, the normal build would say subsume off Divine Spears because it is a CC ability and there's so much more that you can do. Personally, I find that Neja is one of the best casual disruption frames in the game. And there's a few reasons as to why that is. Okay, so his passive slide 60% faster and go 35% farther. So basically he's he's rolling around on Healy's. Okay, there's also an augment to completely shut down his passive and give you a little ability strength. And personally, I highly recommend it if you don't like the way he moves around. You have Firewalker. A lot of people think, oh, cool. I look like something out of Back to the Future. That's true. But if you run through the fire, you cleanse yourself of status effects just saying so not only do you cook enemies and you do you know dot heat damage but you can also cleanse your cleanse yourself of status effects so it's a good time blazing chakram people just do not give this ability enough credit and this is why i say he is insanely good against like assassination targets against archons against fucking acolytes against demolists so you take the big ring off of nezha's back and you just chuck it at the enemy that you're trying to kill it makes them vulnerable, and by vulnerable, you'll see damage vulnerability 385%. It makes them, like, just eggs ready to crack, okay? Um, flaming enemies drop uh, restorative orbs on the ground, charge to amplify the power of the ring, and reactivate to instantly travel to the ring's location. So basically, you can use it as a teleport function as long as you're looking at it and you hit the ability again. Um... Overall, like the health orb drop and the energy orb drop is really kind of dog shit. Doesn't really fucking matter. Um, but the boosted damage, the base heat damage that's applied on top of the damage vulnerability of this particular of this particular ability is unbelievably good. Warding Halo. It's basically like adding extra armor onto Nesha. Okay, so it's basically this ring of slash damage that if you wait until you're getting shot at and then cast this motherfucker, whatever damage that you are getting hit by is what that absorption multiplier is. So let's say you get hit with a million damage. It gets multiplied by 9.62. So now you have 9,620,000 armor. The highest I've gotten at this point uh, fighting these... Um, the 30, was it the 30 or the 6? I think it was the 30 eye boss. Um, I just luckily cast... <laughs> I I luckily, luckily cast Warding Halo right as the, the one down in the cave was doing the beams of light at me. And the beams of light hit me on the, you know, fighting the thing, steel path, and I got like 1.2 billion armor off of this motherfucker. It's kind of ridiculous, Okay. Like, it's insane. It is a 90% damage reduction. And whenever you're casting it, you have an invulnerability time as well. So it's a really, 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 really good ability. And then for something for, like, let's say, general weapons platform play and or uh, doing um, disruptions, something like Roar. 115.5% with my build um, absolutely wrecks the shit out of whatever the fuck you're, you're going after. So the shards are energy max, energy max, energy max. Those are completely unnecessary. Personally, I would actually recommend doing armor. Except the Divine Spears Augment exists. So Divine Retribution. We'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and then ability strength and then casting speed. Four of the five shards on this build are completely fucking useless except for the Divine Retribution. And I still run this build as it sits with these shards to do any other content. We'll look at both builds. So the build that you're seeing is basically the Archon Killer build, is just what I call it. Now you can see the diminished time frame being 21.75 seconds at 73% ability duration. Not too shabby, especially when you're trying to kill shit and you've just caused 385% ability, you know, or damage and vulnerability, but it's 385% strength and fuck everything else, but having a little bit of health and, you know, some armor, right? Just, just, just some 71.2 on top of putting warning halo up. So you're really not going to take a whole lot of damage. Controlled slide is the thing that deactivates his passive because it's fucking annoying. But if you want a weapons platform that can absolutely just destroy the shit out of heavy duty targets, uh, this is your boy. If you just want to survive, this is your boy. 
Now, the Divine Retribution build, as to why in the fuck there's four Archon Shards on this build that make absolutely no goddamn sense, it's this. And I showed this in, in the, you know, Neja didn't exactly get love. Well, Neja got some love when the, the line of sight nerf with Dante hit, but... Divine Retribution, I still think that they should have just left this the fuck alone, because you can't attack heavy units that are overguarded with this, so I don't understand why in the hell they think doing cutting Divine Retribution down to a base 14 meters is still smart. I think it's really dumb, but it's kind of whatever. But this is how you can do the Divine Retribution. I'm going to kill everything in this fucking room kind of setup. But this is really kind of Nesh's bread and butter, and believe me, if you just, if you just want to play the game I ain't dying today, here you go. Four Forma, an Axillus Adapter. Yes, it is two Umber Forma. And believe me when I tell you, it's 100% fucking worth it. Not even joking. Just the Archon Shards that's on here, all three of those blues, do them as armor. You won't regret it. You know, in the casting speed, do it for ability strength. You really will not regret it. I'm fucking telling you right now, you will not regret it at all. So on to the next frame. Nidus. Now, I just recently did a video on Nidus, so I'm not going to do any gameplay because the function of Nidus is very, 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 very simple. Where the hell did Nidus go? Look for my infested fellow. Where the... Where did I put him? Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to feel like a total dickhead. There he is. See, every time I go back and I look at my video, I'm like, hey, stupid, he's right there. Nidus's applications are so goddamn interesting. And at the same time... You kind of look at it like, okay, so this is his base kit. So we're going to look at, we're going to look at this. Okay, as far as what his base kit does. His, pad is, his passive, if Nidus is killed with at least 15 stacks of mutation, those 15 stacks are consumed. This grants five seconds of invulnerability and restores health to 50%. So basically, it's like an immortal ability. As long as you have 15 stacks of mutation, you will just revive at half your health. Not a problem. Virulence. Basically, stomp the ground, start building stacks. It's just what it does. Okay? Larva, big grouping ability. Then you can stomp at it and fuck people up inside of it. Parasitic link. Now, this is basically to link and, you know, you can buff your allies and you can basically redirect damage from yourself to the poor blood bank that you're linked to. And then Ravenous is basically this weird like piece of Deimos, like the cambion drift that you've brought with you and that these little crazy ass little maggots just start affecting the just start attacking the shit out of enemies and it just absolutely fucks your day up and of course the little maggots do blast damage and blast got its rework so it's 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 an interesting time running ravenous now personally i have a little bit of a different build that i like to run which is this it's almost the same Right? Almost the same. A little bit more ability strength, a little bit less range. And I'm running Abundant Mutations, so I can take myself up to um, 300 stacks, so I pretty much never die with Nidus, as long as I have the stacks maxed. And then I run Parasitic Vitality, just on the basis of I'm going to have a shit ton of health if I'm linked to any singular fucking poor individual in the fucking game. Now, does that mean that I'm like a pure god like this? No, but as long as you've got, you know... 300 fucking stacks it's going to take a lot to kill your ass because it's going to take a while to do it but getting the 300 stacks takes a fucking hot minute um but as long as you're above you know 300 stacks uh, you're pretty much not dying anyway so nidus is kind of like this undying weapons platform so as long as you just pay attention to how many stacks you have it's a good time put whatever fucking weapons to whatever weapons you want to on him and it's just generally a good time and the only reason they're replaced with Thero Strike is because that way if I do need to heal, if for some reason I do die, and I come back at 50% health, I swing Thero Strike and I can get my health back. Or if I just want to armor strip people and just absolutely decimate an entire room, there you go. It's a good time. But that's Nidus. He's just the infested immortal fucking frame that as long as you're, you know, as long as you have mutation stacks and you have Parasitic Link, good luck dying. Just kind of how it works. <laughs> And our last frame in this batch, in this group, is Nova. Now, again, these are casual builds. And honest to God, these are casual squad builds. Okay? These are not solo builds, and I promise you, these are nowhere close to perfect. Okay? I'm not even going to say that they are. 
because I have seen people do solo nuke builds with Nova that are absolutely fucking ridiculous, but that's just not how I play it, okay? So we're doing health, health, guess what? Hmm, shield capacity, shield capacity, and shield capacity because I run Condemn on one of the loadouts. Excuse me. Now we're not going to really go over the ability so much in the normal screen. So this is the Slova build. So the way Nova works is really funny. If you apply ability strength, she slows enemies down. If you take away ability strength, so if you tank her ability strength, you speed enemies up. Um, slowed down enemies, like Condemn isn't even necessary, okay? Like 100% is not necessary. I just do it from a simple, you know, here, you know what, guys? I'm going to stand over here. And put myself in a position of becoming a bullet sponge. So I want to make sure that I have enough shield so I don't fucking die kind of setup. Okay. That's really what it is. Uh, Arcane Blessing kind of assists with that because I end up with like 2,240 health. So it's really, it's kind of hard to die with this fucking build. Now the speed build on the other hand is the much more uh, detrimental scary build. Um, because it comes down to the enemies come running at you at the speed of Jesus Christ. And again, I still have Condemn on here. It's fine. It's not a big deal, um, but this is just pure survivability, okay? And Hunter Adrenaline's on here because you can convert 45% of damage on your health to energy. I mean, that's a, it's a really beneficial thing, uh, especially with the speed Nova. You end up casting more often than you would with the slow Nova because, you know, it is what it is. Um, but just depending on the circumstance, uh, like defensive missions, um, you know, generally like survivals, things like that. Um, it's, Nova has some insane applications. Uh, like you can see, I have a Plague Star build, which is a slow build. And uh, I mean to tell you, um, mm -hmm. right, that Plague Star build is, is it's something. It ain't perfect, but it's something. But under normal circumstances, I usually only take her in for the slow function, unless we're trying to do some really, really quick defensive shit, and then it'll be the speed build. Um, but I mean, like, God's sakes, I go hitting buttons. So her passive is when knocked over, emit a six meter defensive burst that topples attacking enemies and deals 250 damage. Basically, it just stuns them. Null star, create an antimatter particle that uh, antimatter particles that orbit Nova and seeking uh, and seek nearby targets. So basically, if anything gets close to you, one of these little bastards goes flying out, does a little bit of slash damage and basically just stuns them for a little bit. Each active particle gives plus five damage reduction to Nova's health, stacking up to 90%. So you can have up to 90% damage reduction as long as enemies aren't getting close to you. If they start getting close to you, you start losing damage reduction and you, um, you know, yeah, it, it just becomes a problem. I uh, condemn, like I said, I just put it on there over the null star ability because I think the null star ability is just kind of dead these days. Some people will disagree and that's fine. Uh, but this is just for pure survivability. You can put whatever the hell survivability or whatever the fuck you want to on here, honestly. Um... Grouping abilities are actually kind of hilarious with her, especially with the speed build. Um, wormhole, basically teleportation stuff. Considering the range it isn't all that great, the range is still 47 fucking meters. So if you need to get somewhere for pretty fucking quick, just aim and, and drop a wormhole and then jump through it. And then molecular prime. This is when people get a little fucked up, okay? So the radius for this is not based on range. People get this so fucked up. The radius, so the range of this ability is based off of duration. Hence why there's a bunch of duration on both builds. Um, because not only is it the effective uh, duration for what the enemies are afflicted with, but it's how fucking far this build will reach out. And as you can see, it's 81.2 fucking meters. So it is a really, really, really good time. Really good time. And see, like, I could just as easily, instead of Firewalker, I could do Hunter Adrenaline here, too. Basically, just run the same build, except one is slow, one is fast. Just saying. But that's Nova. She's a she's a goddamn good frame. Personally, I only use her with squad function because it's just beneficial to either slow or speed up a mission, depending on what the hell you're doing, and weaken the hell out of the enemies with Molecular Prime. Because it certainly does. It basically speeds up or slows down the molecules inside the enemy and causes them to explode. So, <laughs> just by shooting at them. So, yeah. No, Nova is a really, really, really good squad support damage output. Uh, squad support in lieu, uh, or in the 
position of giving extra oomph to kill enemies easily. That's what I use her for. I've seen people use her in a lot of different ways, but that's what I use her for. So that is the end of this list. So folks, I want to thank you very much for watching. As always, we'll catch you in the next one, all right? Thank <laughs> you.